If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, I want to talk to you tonight about freedom in Christ. Freedom in Christ. Uh, I want to share three freedoms. Number one, we are free from condemnation. We are free from condemnation. And man, I'm telling you, that is a huge blessing. All right, number two, we are free from sin. We are free from sin. I know that is a catchy phrase, but I'm not misusing words there. I'm not. I'm just telling you, uh, if you'll look at this passage uh, with me, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Number three, and here it is, we are free from death. You say, wait a minute, I thought everybody dies. Well, folks, everybody dies once, but I am telling you, uh, we are free from death. If you take it in its purest spiritual sense, uh, and we'll share that with you. You know, the Bible tells us that every human being born into this world has a sin nature. Okay, And just because you get saved doesn't mean you don't have a sin nature. If you sit here and tell me you haven't lost your uh, cool one time after you got saved, I am going to question your word. All right, If you haven't had a bad thought, I know you're lying. All right, so we still have this in nature, but Psalms 51, 5 says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, okay? I was born into sin, and in sin my mother conceived me. We can all say this, folks. We were all born into sin. If you, and you had to have a father and a mother. You're not Jesus, okay? All right, it, the virgin birth is a totally different thing, and we're not going to get in that tonight. But I'm telling you, you were born a sinner. It also tells us that every under, uh, unbeliever is under God's condemnation and are children of wrath. If you need a, a scripture on that, Ephesians 2.3 tells us that. Lost people are heavily influenced by Satan and the demons. Everyone will stand before God and be judged. Without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, those without Christ will be condemned to hell. And folks, you know, it doesn't, do me, it doesn't do me any good or it doesn't please me to say that. I'm just telling you what the Bible says, all right? Nobody preaches on hell anymore, and we're not going to tonight, but you have a choice, okay? Nobody can, I mean, the predestination, God never, uh, you know, just says, okay, you're going to hell. He gives us the freedom of choice. Uh, those who, are, who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior will go to heaven. The key to living a victorious Christian life is how we deal with sin. And I want to say this because there are people that just question me when I say this. You don't have to sin. I didn't say you were perfect. I'm just saying you have a choice. You don't have to sin. And we will show you this in just a few minutes. Uh, it will always be a personal choice. God never makes us do anything. We have to decide for ourselves who we are going to serve each day of our lives and in each decision that we make. You can have freedom uh, in Christ Jesus and power over sin. And let me give you the bottom line. In Adam, we are all condemned. Okay, We are all sinners in Adam. And the Bible tells us, but in Christ... There is no condemnation. So let's look at uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. We are free from condemnation. There is therefore, and when you see the word therefore, that means because of the Scriptures before. Okay, And when you look at, we're not going back to chapter 7, but Paul, who I believe was one of the greatest Christians that ever walked the face of this earth. He wasn't perfect, we know that. But I'm telling you, he was strong in the faith. He had a, a hotline to heaven with God. I mean, he saw miracles. God did miracles through him. And he's basically saying in chapter 7, I want to do what's good, but I find myself not doing that. I know what I shouldn't be doing, but I find myself doing that. And then he says, oh, wretched man that, that I am. All right, now when is temptation going to quit? When you take your last breath. It is. You are going to be tempted from now to the time you die. But you don't have to give in to temptation. And you can't blame it on God. I'll, I'll date myself. Flip Wilson, all right? 
little angel on this shoulder, little, do it, don't do it, do it, don't do it. All right, the devil doesn't make you sin. He puts the temptation out there and we choose to sin. So therefore, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus is salvation, folks. Those who are saved, we are not condemned. Okay, God does not condemn us. He's not up in heaven waiting for us to mess up so he can throw them lightning bolts down on us. Now, he doesn't want us to sin. He doesn't like us, doesn't like it when we sin. But we are not condemned because of Jesus Christ. That's what this verse says. There are no condemnation to those who are in Christ who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. In all through chapter 6, 7, and 8, Paul is trying to tell uh, the, the church at Rome, simply saying the, the, the believer's church, God's church there, that listen, you don't have to sin. You, you make a choice. Okay, Everything you do is a choice. Saying yes, and you know what our flesh is, folks? Our flesh is what we want to do. All right, And when you live by what you want to do, I'm telling you, you're, you're messing up. All right, But if you live by the Spirit, and again, I'm not talking about sinless perfection. Everyone slips up. Everyone messes up. But we do not believe you can lose your salvation. There's too much Scripture that says otherwise. It simply means you have a choice. You're gonna, are you going to walk in the flesh or are you going to walk in the Spirit? For the law of the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ has set me free from the law of sin and death. So the key here is walking in the Spirit. And I got to thinking about this and jotted three things down here. The law cannot claim you, all right? The law cannot claim you. You are under grace. You are under grace. Number two, the law cannot condemn you. You know, Paul says right here that we are not condemned. Why? Because of the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. God forgave you of your sins. And some people, and, and this is a thing that I say, folks, we as Christians do not need to be a disgrace to grace. We don't. Because I've, I've heard people say, well, I'm going to go out on Friday night and I'm going to do this. I know it's a sin, but I'm going to go you know, to church on Sunday and ask God to forgive me. Folks, I'm just telling you that is not going to work with God. All right? Either they are in a serious backslidden condition, or they may not even be saved. All right, I'm not judging. I'm just saying the law cannot condemn you. Number three, the law cannot control you. The law cannot control. When we think of the law, folks, we're talking about the Old Testament. We're talking about the Old Testament sacrifices and the blood and the animals and, and all that. I will obey the Ten Commandments. I do follow the Ten Commandments. But even Jesus said he hasn't come uh, you know, as far as the law is, the law never saved anyone. Let me give you a perfect example. We have laws right here in Fort Smith. I wonder how many people broke the law today on the road right out in front of our church. It's 45 miles an hour. Okay, does that sign keep you from breaking the law? No, it doesn't. Because, folks, I've been on there. People go 55, 60 miles an hour. All right? And so the law is a plumb line. The law let us know what was right and what is wrong. Okay? It, but it doesn't save you. It, it cannot claim you. It cannot condemn you. And it does not control you because you have the freedom in Christ Jesus. Look at the rest of this. For what, what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. Think about the law and Moses having it in his hands, the Ten Commandments. What did he do with the first writing? He threw it down in anger and broke it into pieces. All right? What does the Bible say? Be angry and sin not? I mean, I'm just saying Moses... Moses, another example, folks, I'm telling you, he did not get a good start, all right? He, he did not get a good start. He had to flee the country because he broke the law, 
And that's what he's saying. In our flesh, you can write all the laws you want, but it doesn't guarantee everyone's going to follow those laws. But we have the law of God that we need to obey. But I'm telling you, we have the Spirit of Christ that tells us when we break that law, Mike, you're messing up. You're messing up. And folks, I'm just telling you, a true Christian does not want to sin. I didn't say they won't sin, but they do not want to sin. And we are not because of Jesus. That's what he says, because uh, God sending his own son in the likeness. And again, remember the word likeness. Jesus never sinned. He became the perfect. He was the perfect lamb of God and went on the cross and died for our sins and for our transgressions. Look at the rest of that verse. He condemns sin in the flesh, verse 3, that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Have you ever asked yourself this question, how much do you sin? How much do you sin? Can I answer that for you? As much as you choose to do. Okay? Because, you know, what we do, and we do it in our mind, okay, I haven't killed anybody, I haven't committed adultery, I haven't done none of the big stuff. But folks, I'm telling you, even Jesus said, if you're breaking one of the laws, you're breaking all the laws. And I can tell you one we don't keep. You tell me you've never lied, you've never buried false witness, you've never exaggerated. You can't keep the laws, and keeping the laws doesn't save you, folks. We are not condemned. Yes, we are guilty before Christ, but he forgave us of our sin, and we are not under condemnation. Yes, we can be under the judgment of God. Yes, God can scourge us. God can correct us and discipline us, but we are not under condemnation. We are free in Christ Jesus. Hold your finger there and go to Colossians 2. Go to Colossians 2. Man, I love this scripture. Look at Colossians 2.13. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he is made alive together with him. Folks, I wasn't sick with sin. I was dead in sin. All right? I was dead. All right? I wasn't spiritually alive. And when you came to Christ, he made you alive in Jesus Christ. Folks, you know, if I have a choice, I really don't want to hang around dead people. Okay? I want to be around somebody that's alive. I want, I want that Holy Spirit, that feeling. i tell you one of the neatest things. I, just this Sunday, I was in the baptistry with Nancy. And I'm telling you, hair went up on the back of my head when she came up and praised the Lord. Why? Because she was free. She got that peace that passes all understanding. Now look at this. He has made us alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Your past has been forgiven. Psalm says that as far as the east is from the west. When you got saved, it's to remember you no more. He erased it. He erased it and you started over. Right today, I know, man, if you've had an attitude, if, if, you, if you just had, you know, there's so many ways that we sin and we just think, oh, it's not that big a deal. Okay, folks, God forgave you today. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Now look at this. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to to us. Now think about this one, and if, if it was my sin, I'm telling you the list before I got saved, it was 22 years old, you could start here and it would roll to the back of this church. That's how much sin I had in my life. I mean, I wasn't pursuing God, I wasn't saved, I'm just telling you. But look what he did. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Our sin was nailed to the cross with Jesus Christ. We are not condemned anymore. That condemnation is not there. 
It is not there. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. See, Satan thought he had won at the cross. Satan thought Jesus was dead. Satan thought, man, I am the victor. All right? I influenced the Romans. I have done all this. And I'm telling you, on that third day, Jesus arose. He was alive, folks. He was seen by more than 500 witnesses. And that is what set that church on fire, that Acts chapter 2 church. They had seen the risen Christ. So what, and the reason I say this, we are not condemned, Satan keeps condemning us. Satan keeps beating us down. Satan keeps telling us, you are worthless. What if everybody knew what you were thinking right now? What if everybody saw what you just said? What if everybody, and you don't want to do those things, but the key there is walking in the Spirit. We are not condemned. We are free from sin. We can choose Jesus Christ. So, we are free from condemnation. Number two, we are free from sin. We are free from sin. Look at verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. And folks, uh, it's just like telling a lost person, for instance, and, and again, you can, you can take any sin. They don't think certain things are sins. Why? I've heard this says, well, it's my body. I can do with it what, what I want to do with it. But folks, I am telling you, there are sins. I mean, uh, uh, just like drunkenness, all right? When you get in a vehicle and you are drunk, you, I'm just telling you, there's so many bad things that can go on. And what they say is, oh, I just drank one too many, and oh, I just, you know, I'm trying to drown my sorrows. Oh, I'm trying to do this. And a lot of people in that sin doesn't see that there's anything wrong with that. But folks, if I'm in my car and I've got my grandbabies in the back, there is something. I don't want them to be on the highway when you're there. Okay? Your sin affects others. And that's what he's saying. He's saying folks that are lost, they don't even realize that they're lost. They don't even realize the consequences of the choices that they make. Why? Because they live in the flesh. They just live in the flesh. They don't think anything about it. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. You know some of the most exciting people that I have ever hung around? It's new Christians. People that just got saved. I mean, they don't have a care in the world. They just got their burdens lifted. They just realized who they are and what happened in their lives. And they are filled with the Spirit and so excited. That's what he's saying. Look at verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. That's, again, loss. Carnal is worldly. Okay? It's death. Okay? You, you, you will be separated from God. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Life and peace. Think of those two things. Think of those two things. I'm just telling you folks, God quickens us. God gives us life. God gives us hope. God gives us eternal life. He quickens us with that. Uh, and not only life, but peace. Again, folks, one of the things, when I made my third decision, I never had the peace of God in my life. I went to church. I grew up in the church. I walked away from the church for two years, but I am telling you, when I really was alone and got to thinking about it, I did not have that peace. Folks, that peace comes from knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. It gives us peace. Look at verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind, the worldly mind. Folks, just think about what's going on right now. You can't go into the grocery store now and be safe. You can't go to Walmart. You can't go to a gas station. You can't go to a school. There are even shootings in churches. We know that has happened. Why is that? That's that carnal mind. 
They're living in sin. They're not considering God. They're not walking in the Spirit. They don't even know what the Holy Spirit is. The carnal mind is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, you can be a good person, all right? I know some good moral persons that don't know Christ, but they don't have that peace. They don't have that life. They don't understand. It's kind of like if you've never experienced something, you, you don't know. You didn't know it was out there. But I'm telling you, peace comes from knowing Christ. And uh, Romans 6, just go back two chapters with me. Romans 6, Paul says this really, really well in these verses. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, verse 5, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. That power, that resurrection power that was in Jesus Christ is in us now. It's that dunamis is the word, okay? Uh, that's where we get our word dynamite, dynamite, okay? Explosion, excitement, all right? Uh, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Folks, if you even think about baptism, buried, death with Christ, raised to walk in the newness of life. He has given us that new life. For he who has died has been freed from sin. What does that mean? We don't have to sin. We don't have to sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. That's why I say, and that's in the second part, or the third point. Folks, I'm telling you, we're not going to die that second death. We are alive in Jesus Christ. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died uh, to sin once and for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Now, verse 11 is the key. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead to sin. Now, folks, I'm telling you, I need to be dead to sin. I, don't, I need to be so spirit-filled that when sin tempts him, when sin comes to my, my way, it's really not a temptation. Because here's the deal. Satan, just like when he was talking to Eve, he wanted to put doubt in Eve's mind. Okay? You know, God, God really didn't mean that. He, he just, you know, if you do this, you'll be like God. He lied like a dog. All right? He lied. And that's what he's saying. We have... For instance, and again, I'm not trying to be morbid here, but if there was a, a, a person, if there was a casket here, sitting right here and somebody in that thing, it doesn't matter what you did. You could walk by there. You could pray out. You could do whatever you want. That person is not going to react to you. Why? Because that person is physically dead. And what he is saying is we need to be so full of Jesus that when that sin comes up to us, we don't even react to it. We don't even react to it. And folks, I'm telling you in life, that is not an easy thing to do. When somebody's being ugly, when somebody's in your face, when somebody's being mean, when somebody's messing with your family, okay, we don't need to react to that. Again, I'm not talking about being a doormat. Yes, I will defend my family. I'm just simply saying we don't need to, to uh, respond to sin. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Folks, I am telling you, I, I really don't understand people that says, you know, and I've had people, when I've witnessed to them, they said, man, you know, i got to give up this, and i got to give up that, and I can't go do this, and I can't go do that. You know, what am I going to do? I've heard young people say, what are we going to do in heaven? What are we going to do? That It might I even heard a kid say, it might be boring up there. I'm like, dude, you, you have no idea what you're talking about. You have zero idea. Folks, I am telling you, your first 30 seconds in heaven is going to be the th 
thrill of your life. Why? Because, folks, we are free from condemnation. We are free from sin. We don't have to sin. And I've said this many a times, the closer you get to Christ, the further you get from sin. The closer you get to Christ, the further you get from sin. Then the last thing, number three, we are free from death. We are free from death. Look at verse 9. Verse 9, Romans 8, 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Folks, that Spirit is exciting. That Spirit of God, you know, uh, when, when things happen down here uh, two weeks ago, <coughs> excuse me, you know, we had we just, right before the Lord's Supper, I'm telling you, I went home shouting. Four people join our church. Five people come down and rededicate their life to Christ. That is a spirit-filled person, a spirit-filled church, okay? It's alive. And I will say this, folks, nobody wants to go to a dead church. Nobody. But it's it's. We, we have to stay focused. We have to keep giving God credit. We have to understand it is the Spirit of God that is doing these things. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. All right? He's not a Christian. He's not a son and daughter of Christ. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And even with the condemnation, folks, I'm telling you, when God looks at you and you stand before God, all right, your sin has already been paid for. Your judgment is the bema seat, and your works are going to be judged. Your sin was judged at the cross. We won't be condemned. I've, I heard an evangelist one time in Lawton, Oklahoma, just says, every sin that you ever committed is going to be up on this big screen and you're going to give an account, and everybody's going to watch you do this. I'm telling you, I'm in big trouble if that's the tr But folks, that is not what the Bible says. We are not condemned. We are not condemned. We are free from sin, and we are free from death. Look at the rest of this. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Folks, I'm telling you, I will die once. We're all going to die. Now, I'm still holding out for the rapture. I'm hoping we all get to go together in the rapture. But if not... If not, I am telling you, our spirit, we will be raised unto eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 6. And the first five verses basically says that your body is like a tent. Okay, a tent is not a permanent dwelling place. It's a temporary place. All right, and our body aches. All right, if, I'm, if you're like me, you get up and you figure out what's hurting and what's not hurting, okay? And then you plan your day around what's hurting and not what's... Our, this body is decaying, okay? This, and the older you get, the more you hurt. All right, I'm learning that. But, verse 6, so we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. We went on vacation and we just spent four nights in a motel. And after the second night, you know what I missed? I missed my shower and I missed my bed. I mean, why? Because I'm not used to it. And you know what the Bible says? Folks, this world is not our, our, our dwelling place. This is not our permanent home. Yes, I live at 9805 Broadwell. Okay, but that's my temporary dwelling place. I've already got a place. And you know what sometimes I have to do? I have to realize in Jesus Christ, I'm already there. I'm already there. Well, this ain't heaven. I'm not talking about heaven here. I, this is not heaven. All right, there's some people that think this is heaven, and boy, they are seriously deceived. Okay, my, my home, my permanent dwelling place is in heaven. For we walk by faith, verse 7, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, 
Rather, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Folks, I'm telling you, when we take our last breath here on earth, we will take our first breath in heaven with those glorified bodies. We are free from death. That's why when we lay our head on the pillow at night, and if you're like me, one of the hardest things I have to do is turn that mind off. Just try to click it off for six or seven hours because there's that battle going on. It's, it's our flesh and it's Satan. The temptation is there. But folks, I am telling you, we are free from death. One last scripture, 1 Corinthians 15. Just go back a few chapters. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? Folks, we have victory in Jesus. All right? God wins, folks. I've read the final chapter. God wins. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Satan will throw that up in your face. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Folks, I am not, I'm, I mean in my own life, we are walking towards victory. He won it on the cross and we are on the winning team. We are on the winning team. And then he gives us some advice. Therefore, my beloved brethren, Christians, be steadfast immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And folks, sometimes we look around and we, we, as a society, base everything on numbers, on numbers. But I am telling you just a perfect example. Some 75-year-old Christian pastor that's been in West Texas uh, leading a church for 27 years, doing exactly what God has asked him to do, and, and the most he's ever ran is 45, will be in the same category, will be equal with these folks running mega churches. Why? Folks, I'm just telling you, it's all about God, okay? Because Sometimes we just get caught up in, in worldly things. We get caught up in the ways of the world. And i got news for you, according to the Word, folks, the, the Word of God, the world's never going to satisfy. The world always wants more. They are, you know, the world always uh, you know, is looking for the big bang and the flash and all these things going off. But, you know, most of it is I. I did this and I did that and look what I did. And folks, that is totally opposite of what Jesus said. Jesus did it all on the cross, folks. He did it all. And I am just thank God that I am free from condemnation. I am free from sin. And I am free from death. Father, thank you. Thank you for Romans chapter 8. Really, 6, 7, and 8 are just three of my favorite scriptures in your word. And God, I thank you that because we are yours, because we are saved, because you paid for our sins, uh, God, we don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. We don't have to say things aren't fair. And when I think of your life and I think of Paul's life, you talk about not being fair. And God, I pray that we will not walk in the flesh, that we will walk in in the spirit i pray that we would be spirit-filled christians just going to bed with a smile on our face knowing that we have been forgiven knowing that spiritually minded people have life and peace and knowing that if we pass away tonight we will be with you forever and ever and ever thank you for the victory you gave us at the cross. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.